Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
prayers for forgiveness and healing before the Blessed Sacrament. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are before the Lord, who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Heavenly Father, you know my needs, and you feel my pain, trials, and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with our guided contemplation of the Gospel. To familiarize ourselves with the Gospel text of our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 35 to 40, in which Jesus proclaims, Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. But as I have told you, you can see me and still you do not believe. That the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I shall not turn him away. 
because I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the Gospel that we just heard proclaimed to help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's Word and also to prepare our hearts for the guided contemplation prayer. In today's Gospel, Jesus begins by proclaiming to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Jesus is proclaiming to us and the whole world that he alone can fulfill the deepest desires and longings of our hearts and soul and of all of humanity. And as such, all the material attractions of wealth and health and possessions and the secular glamour, glory and gratification of the world that feeds our ego and emotional needs are superficial and passing and cannot truly fulfill the deep longings of our hearts and souls. However, Jesus proclaims and assures us that once we have discovered the true love for him, that he is indeed our Lord and Saviour, then all other earthly needs and longings will fade and pass away as unimportant and superficial. This is because when you and I have the grace to see and the wisdom to affirm and live the truth, that what lasts for eternity is far more important than what is passing in this earthly life, even if we can live to to a hundred years of age. Then such divine graces will give us the true freedom to live in the peace and joy that God wants to give us during our earthly living. And when we are able to live with such clear wisdom of desiring to attain the final goal of living with God for all eternity, then our present life's direction will be charted towards gaining the gift of eternal life that God, our Father, wants to give us when we die. Such special divine graces will also help us affirm that His love for us is unconditional and His merciful forgiving love for us is infinite. And as He has shown through sending His Son to proclaim the good news of salvation and who willingly accepts the heavy price of His cruel death on the cross for us. <clears throat> My sisters and brothers in Christ, the good news that we just heard proclaim is the essence of our faith. Yet many of us believers are not yet fully immersed into the living of our faith with the fidelity and zeal that God wills of you and of me. As such, today's guided contemplation prayer that gives us the invaluable opportunity to reflect on our heart's desires and the basic direction of our lifestyles can, through the Holy Spirit, create a greater consciousness in us of the kind of lifestyle that we have adopted and enlighten us further on how we are called to live our Father's will more wholeheartedly.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation proper, may I urge you to please switch off your mobile phones and set up a conducive ambience for our prayer. Please also note that as I, as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find what I say to be helpful for your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in some personal way that is different from what I'm saying, simply ignore what I'm saying. Please also note that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation because they give you the sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. But if you wish to have more details of the structure of this guided gospel contemplation and also to listen to the introduction of this whole series, please click on to the button at the bottom of this video. And so, my sisters and brothers in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. Please close your eyes and let us begin by composing ourselves. Focus your attention on your nostrils by becoming aware of your breathing. Feel the air entering your nostrils and into your lungs, the air that is giving you life. Every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life. For it is God who is keeping you alive. For as soon as you stop breathing, you will die. This God who is giving you the gift of life is present within your heart and is loving you personally and intimately. Get in touch with this infinite God of love within your heart and thank Him for loving you. Prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to contemplate this gospel of Jesus proclaiming to the crowd who are searching for the truth of salvation. That he indeed is the truth and the bread of life that quenches our thirst and fulfills our longings through offering us the gift of eternal life. Send forth your Spirit upon us to open our minds and hearts to know ourselves more authentically and love you more wholeheartedly.
imagine yourself at the scene where are you, where you are on the shore of Tiberius with Jesus and his disciples before the great multitude of crowds who are clamoring to get near Jesus and you are standing beside Jesus and his disciples Jesus is aware that they are hungering to be fulfilled spiritually and so Jesus proclaims to them He who comes to me will never be hungry and he who believes in me will never thirst Hearing this, the crowds remain puzzled and does not understand what Jesus is proclaiming to them as their belief in Jesus is very superficial. Look into your own hearts for a moment. What do you sense are your present lifestyle and preoccupations? Who are the people who take up most of your concerns and energies each day? Imagine them before you for a moment and how you are relating to them. Sense Jesus looking at you with love and concern. And what he's trying to say to you about these people.
what are the things at work and in your daily living that are at present occupying your attention and interest and taking up your time and energies. and giving you joy and fulfillment in your life. What is Jesus saying to you about these things that you are experiencing in your life now? Jesus also sees and senses with much compassion the different challenges you are facing. Speak to him about them. And feel Jesus listening to you attentively and with much compassion. Jesus then puts his arm around your shoulders and you feel his warmth, affection and concern. Try to sense what Jesus is trying to say to you about his Father's will here and now for you.
Jesus too sees the joys and blessings of your heart and home. He then looks at you with a big smile and with joy in his heart. What is he saying to you about your joys? Jesus then addresses the crowd again and says, Whoever comes to me, I shall not turn him away. And it is my Father's will that whoever sees and believes in me shall have eternal rest, eternal life. And I shall raise him up on the last day. The crowd continues to remain in the dark and cannot comprehend what Jesus is proclaiming to them. And Jesus feels great sorrow and mercy for them who are lost in their lives. Allow the words of Jesus to penetrate your hearts, echoing within your heart that you now hear, those who believe in me will have the gift of eternal life. Sense the presence and closeness of Jesus within your heart. and what Jesus is trying to say to you. Become aware that you are now leaving the gospel scene and be conscious that you are now in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that soon after our contemplative prayer, we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review needs to take some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during the prayer. So you are to get in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and describe your experiences of what happened. So may I ask you to close your eyes now as you click the pause button and spend the next five minutes or so to make your review of your contemplation prayer. Welcome back. Brothers and sisters in Christ, for those of you who have missed this, may I urge you to keep a spiritual diary of your prayer experiences. This diary is a record of your prayer experiences. So you may write down the date, the time and the duration and the passage of the gospel that you have contemplated on. Then describe the key prayer experiences of what happened during the prayer, the images of what you saw and the inner feelings of what happened during the prayer, the inner feelings of peace, joy, of being loved by Jesus, of interacting with the crowd, or perhaps the dryness, as though nothing happened during the prayer or you simply felt sleepy during the prayer. The description of your prayer experiences need not be lengthy. Just note down what you feel comfortable to note down as relevant. Meanwhile, this would be sufficient and we will return to explain more of this in our future sessions. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with a guided contemplation form of prayer and would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and the steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, please click the button below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you will soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. So please take one patient step at a time and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experiences of Jesus in ways that you have never experienced before. Thank you for your attention and we shall now move on to the next part of our session, which is the benediction.
you have given them bread from heaven. Having in itself all delight. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption, you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in the last session, which is session seven, we reflected on the theme that God never fails to give us the strength in our needs. For this, we reflected on the true story of Jasmine, who was able to draw strength from God to love and care for her mother-in-law who rejected and hated her for 25 years. In her dying moments, the mother-in-law asked Jasmine, Why do you love me when I don't love you? And when she heard Jasmine respond, Because Jesus wants me to love you, she broke down and cried uncontrollably and said, I too want to know and love Jesus. She then asked for baptism and eventually died a Catholic. Throughout Jasmine's 25 years of ordeal, even though she faced great painful challenges and wanted to give up on many occasions, nevertheless, deep within her heart, she felt that it was God's will that God wants her to love and care for her mother-in-law because she also is a precious daughter of God. And so Jasmine obeyed God's will and in so doing found the divine strength to persevere in her love and care for her mother-in-law. In today's session, as we continue to reflect on God in our lives, we shall take on the theme that God is merciful. God's mercy and compassionate love is a mystery 
that many of us struggle to comprehend, especially when the pain and the sufferings are overwhelming and there does not seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel. In such situation, God seemed to be absent. And in such suffering, a person could express his or her pain as, for example, I find myself in the abyss of darkness that is threatening to swallow me. Or God's silence is deafening. Where is God when I need him most? Why is he not answering my pleas and allowing the cruel pain to eat me up? What wrong have I done to deserve such pain and anguish in my life? We can very well imagine millions of people echoing such pains in their hearts during this present COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. In such agonies and traumas of life, many of us may very understandably be tempted to give up on God and turn to other voices and even vices. However, before we rush into some irrational choices because the past is too too much to bear and the pain is beyond us to withstand, let us not forget what Jesus himself went through. Does your pain not echo Jesus' cry of anguish in the agony of the garden when he said, Father, if possible, remove this cup from me, but your will and not my will be done. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Some years ago, one of my aunties, Mabel, not her real name, from overseas, showed up unexpectedly and cried out to me. She said, my son, who is working here in Singapore, is so deeply depressed that he has become violent. He was uncontrollable and took out a kitchen knife to threaten to harm his girlfriend Lucy, not her real name, and me. My heart was pounding in fear and my mind was bombarded with the thought, what if he stabs Lucy with a knife? In my desperation, I begged God to rescue us. And after some time, I was left with, without any choice but to call the police as the critical situation was beyond my control. The police arrived and arrested my son and sent him to IMH where he was sedated. My son now hates me for calling the police and wish that I'm dead. My heart was torn and I began to ask myself, what have I done in surrendering my own son to the police? As I was in deep sorrow and pouring my heart out to Jesus in my prayer, it dawned on me that when I sacrificed my only son, what was foremost in my mind was the safety of Lucy. A day later, as my heart was still wrenching in confusion, guilt and sorrow, and as I sat in silence before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, it then dawned on me that God, our loving Father too, sacrificed His only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for the sake and salvation of humanity. Likewise, Auntie Mabel was going through the passion of Christ. 
You and I are each called to unite our pain and suffering with the mystery of God's mercy and suffering because they are inseparable realities. Auntie Mabel's suffering of her son's rejection and disowning her was the weight of the cross she was called to bear for choosing God's will of protecting Lucy from any harm. We could say that such a sincere desire to protect Lucy from harm is clearly God's will for Auntie Mabel in that desperate moment. And we can also see that she had to make the painful decision of sacrificing her son by calling the police to arrest him and as a result pay the price, the costly price of choosing God's will. In her prayers, Auntie Mabel then had to unite her decision in humble surrender and with unwavering trust, pray to Jesus, like Jesus, Father, if possible, remove this cup, but not my will, but your will be done. My brothers and sisters in Christ, when we reflect on our lives for a moment and ask ourselves, have I not gone through similar pain and suffering like Auntie Mabel in my past life's experiences? And also with courage chosen God's will as a greater good instead of favouring other people, including our loved ones, or being detached to certain material gains and glory, all for the sake of God's will and His glory, and as such, paid the price of being faithful to God. During such times of choices, let us ask ourselves, how did I endure the pain and weather the storms of having to choose God's will. In retrospect, was I not eventually, because like Jesus, God gave me the graces and strength to persevere in my faith, hope and love in Him, that I was then able to transcend the pain and the suffering that I had to endure. My sisters and brothers in Christ, as I conclude, let us note that one of the key principles of the discernment of God's will, according to St. Ignatius of Loyola, is that one should never make any decisions in time of spiritual desolations. As in Auntie Mabel's case, she was experiencing emotional pain and suffering when her son was threatening to harm her and Lucy, her son's girlfriend. She did not allow her fears to dominate her decision. Instead, Auntie Mabel was able to go beyond her emotional desolation and firmly chose God's will of protecting Lucy from danger and harm. And even when she had to pay the price and carry the cross of her son's rejection and wishing that she is dead, Auntie Mabel bore her pain and cross by uniting them with the cross of Jesus' suffering and cross and held on firmly to her faith and trusted God wholeheartedly. Believing strongly that the light of Jesus' resurrection will dawn in God's time and ways. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to having you in our next session as we continue to reflect on who God is for us more clearly. 
so that you and I can continue to live a more discerning life as God wills of us. Heavenly Father, as we come before your Son who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, and as we have contemplated on how your merciful love will always give us the strength to do your will, we pray that you continue to give us that light of wisdom and strength in our heart to live your will more firmly, with greater fidelity and generosity. And so we pray, Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to seek for reward, save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen. Thank you.